Well, thank you, Charles. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am uh, trying to uh, uh, get used to uh, the idea to be wanted as a uh, business. Uh, uh, for many years, uh, I've had to uh, uh, argue that business had a legitimate role in addressing uh, sustainable development and climate and that we, uh, we should be allowed to be in the room. And uh, I remember in 1992 in Rio when government stood up and they said, uh, the world consists of governments and NGOs. Business did not exist uh, in the way they described the world. Uh, five years later, though, at the Rio Plus Five, we had managed to convince them that it was actually a tripolar world with governments, business, and civil society. Now, uh, today, I find myself uh, then uh, in a very different situation when I, I listen to uh, uh, the speakers before me, Mornay from WWF, Andrew from the World Bank. Business uh, is very much wanted, and uh, uh, expectations are very high. And, I get a little bit nervous that uh, uh, you are, uh, you are uh, asking business uh, to do a lot, uh, uh, that uh, uh, your expectations and wishes uh, uh, might be a little bit on the high side, at least in the shorter term. But um, uh, there were others that uh, tried to keep us honest. We had our Global Business Day yesterday. and. Uh, Greenpeace uh, demonstrated outside and made a point that we, we were doing far too much. We should not really have those type of relations with governments that we have. So uh, uh, forgive me for being a, a little bit uh, trying to find my right mindset uh, now in, in moving forward. Now, um, uh, when I look at the context for uh, business actions, uh, we clearly have a resource and carbon constrained world, as, as we've heard. Uh, but what uh, leading governments have concluded as a result is that uh, if you want to be a leading economy in the future, uh, then uh, uh, you have to be able to deliver resource efficient, uh, uh, low carbon uh, solutions. Uh, uh, and uh, there is now, since a couple of years, a green race going on, a competition about which countries are going to take the lead role uh, in this competition. Um, and uh, uh, what I see is how a number of the developing countries are uh, investing. We heard China being mentioned, and, and, I, and I am since 16 years uh, an official advisor to the Chinese government. The five-year plan that China uh, now decided this spring is a game plan for the green race. Uh, and then when I talk to the Chinese government, uh, they are saying, we are now in a fierce competition with the other leading economies about who is going to dominate the future world economy that is going to require these type of solutions. We, China, are going to win that race. We are going to dominate the economy. Uh, and if I look at what is going on in some of these developing countries, and I compare that uh, uh, with what is going on in the United States, uh, which is, in my view, the most innovative economy, but which is in a political deadlock. Uh, so the, uh, the innovations in the US are not being transformed into market, uh, market demands and investments. And, and the US is going backwards in the green race rather than, than going forward at this point in time. So we're looking at a world which is very complex uh, uh, when it comes to this. But it's quite clear that uh, uh, there is a green race, there is a competition, and that's also the case uh, for many companies. Another part of the context that uh, uh, we are faced with uh, um, is a world where nobody is in charge. Uh, the intergovernmental processes have been weakened, like for the UN, WTO. Uh, so we, we are in a world where if I, as the World Business Council, want to talk to world government and I knock on the door, nobody is at home. Uh, and, and that's another problem for us uh, as, as global companies. Then uh, we look at a world uh, where um, there, we have made a lot of investments in infrastructure, and I think we underestimate how long time it will take uh, to change that infrastructure that we have. If I look at uh, the World Energy Outlook now from, uh, uh, from the IEA, uh, they are saying very clearly uh, that uh, they expect that by 2035, 
75% of the, the energy is coming from fossil fuels still, even with uh, optimistic assumptions. So we have, a, we, we have a world which is not going to just change immediately uh, into uh, another type uh, uh, of infrastructure. So that's the context. Now, uh, then, uh, I agree that uh, governments will not be able to create a sustainable world on their own. I agree that business uh, uh, has a much bigger role. And one of the drivers for us is that business cannot succeed in a society that fails. But the challenge is, uh, what does that mean? We cannot take over the role of uh, governments. Someone was saying here, business should now see this as an opportunity and take the lead and take over the role of governments. That we cannot do. We won't have that legitimacy to do that. But we can do a lot. But the question is, what can we do? How far, how far can we go and still maintain a legitimacy for what we are doing in, in, the, in the eyes and minds uh, of uh, the people? We also have a situation that uh, here we talk a lot about mitigation. We have an adaptation issue and I think we cannot take for granted that we will reach the two degrees target. We could very well have more, at least uh, up to 2050, in the form of climate change. And adaptation is a very important issue where uh, we need to play a role also as the business community. And the third thing that we have to do in parallel is er eradicate poverty. Uh, we have here in South Africa 20% uh, uh, of the people that don't have access to electricity, even if we are in South Africa. Uh, so we have to do these things uh, at the same time. Mitigate, adapt to probably uh, somewhat more climate change, and uh, then have economic growth to eradicate poverty. Now, uh, it's clear that we need to find more cooperation between business and governments, uh, as, in, as is being said. And I agree that business has the majority of the technologies, the financial resources, the management skills uh, that is needed uh, to drive change. But uh, we cannot do it if we do not have a supportive regulatory framework. Uh, markets are, for many of the areas that we talk about, too slow on their own. We need support of regulatory frameworks. If it comes to energy efficiency in buildings, land transport, energy generation, electricity generation, there is an, a very, very clear role for the right type uh, of regulatory frameworks. So we need to work together uh, between governments and business. But we need from business to be clear on what we can do, and express that more clear than what we have done, but, and that will give us the legitimacy to then ask governments to do their part and give us uh, uh, the framework uh, that we need. Uh, this uh, is then normally called public-private uh, partnerships, and uh, I'm sure that uh, we will pursue a lot of these uh, partnerships uh, going forward. Uh, but it isn't uh, that easy to take people with very different cultures and put them together in a partnership. Uh, uh, so it will be uh, a struggle to come to an understanding uh, of how this is going to work. Uh, I think uh, we now have uh, time after Durban, up to Rio, to uh, think a lot about these partnerships. Uh, uh, we launched uh, last year a Vision 2050 from the World Business Council where we've outlined what kind of transformations are needed. Um, and I, I think we as a global society have enough awareness now about what is needed. The focus of these partnerships that we talk about going forward have to be on implementation uh, and solutions. Bottom up, probably. Uh, not the least focused on, on industry sectors uh, uh, and connected to national action plans like is being discussed uh, here. So um, overall, I see a clear mind shift uh, happening, which I see is very positive uh, uh, for us in business. Uh, and it's happened very quickly. So as I started by saying, I'm trying to adapt myself to this new minds, uh, mindset and, and enjoy the pleasure of being, uh, being wanted and, uh, and asked for. That is great. But at the same time, 
I don't want to end up in a situation where in a year's time or whatever, uh, there are disappointments that we have not delivered uh, sufficiently. And therefore, I think we have to understand uh, the context in which we are trying to address these issues. And uh, that things uh, in a complex uh, modern society will not just change overnight. This is a process that we are starting, but I think we are changing track and we are going on down the right track now. Thank you very much.